So I like to have fun when people want to have fun in the music industry. I said when I was bored and get around to it, I was going to make this video. Just haven't had time, but now I got plenty of time and I'm bored. So I like to respond to people. And my friend said I should do this for fun, and I am going to do it. It's all for fun, just for kicks. So when it comes to a lot of things, there's absolutely no competition when it comes to you versus me. That's just typically the way it goes. Typically. Not all the time. If it's Michael Jordan, yeah, there's no competition because it's Michael Jordan and I am just me. When it comes to recording studios... I am Michael Jordan, and you are just you. But I don't think people understand that in the recording studio industry. They like to challenge me. And if they don't like to challenge me verbally with their equipment and their mouth and their attitude and their new generation of never being disciplined by their parents, they like to challenge me with their words. So let me respond back. In this lifetime, as I said many times, as you go through life, you're going to have some good people and you're going to have some bad people. You're going to have some people who like you, who want to follow you, who believe in you. Pretty much what it comes down to is their soul is connected to your soul. Their energy is connected to your energy. They want to learn from you. They want to be like you. They want to work with you. They want to collaborate with you. And then you're going to have some people who are jealous of you. They don't like you. They despise you. They hate you. Secretly, they really do love you. Secretly, they really do admire you. Secretly, they really want to be like you. But they don't know how to say that. So I understand. I get it. So let's go over some good parts. You got some amazing ass fucking people at Chicago Recording Company. And I met them. You got some really shitty, dumb people at Chicago Recording Company where they are so beyond dumb it just makes you want to laugh because it's funny and it's legal to laugh at them. You got the best person at Chicago Recording Company and he's not even there anymore. The best person probably in the history of Chicago Recording Company is Bruce. Angel, smart, not only an engineer, but a technician. Not only a technician, but an instrument player. Not only an instrument player, he's wise. He's just a beyond an angel. He's, he's probably a better person than me. Bruce is just beyond the best. You got some of these rappers who go, <laughs> sorry, you guys, nervous laugh. You got some of these rappers who go to Chicago Recording and they pick other engineers besides Bruce. They don't even know about Bruce. They have no idea about him, which baffles my mind because I promise you he is the best engineer or was the best engineer at Chicago Recording Company. You got Sarah who's great for business, honest for business, an honest woman, just cool, just chill, just laid back. You make a deal with her on the budget. She gives you the price. You get a package deal. You inform her what you want to do. It's amazing. And she'll never break her word. Take my word for it. She'll never break her word. You got John, who's chill, who's laid back, non-judgmental, laughs every now and then, non-judgmental at all, and he just wants to work how it should be. Those are the three people that I have experience with throughout the years. You got Chris, who I never met before, unfortunately. He's a genius. I think he worked with Smashing Pumpkins during their prime. You could learn a lot from Chris. Again, I never met him, but I could tell great Dude, no questions asked. So that's the good side. Then you got the bad side. Then you got the naive side. Then you got the horrible side. Then you got 
I wouldn't call them demons. You, you just sit back and be like, you did not just fucking do that. You did not just fucking say that. You did not just push that fucking button after I asked you three times not to push that button on the mixing board. And I don't even know where to begin. I, I guess I'll start from the, the, the top. So, you <laughs> and I'm not mad. I'm just more laughing. I'm going to show you off my equipment. I'm, I'm going to show you a real recording studio for fun. All right? For fun. You got these recording studios. It's big business. It's money. Typically, most recording studios owe on the equipment. And that monthly payment for owing on the equipment, that could be around $8,000 sometimes. So they have to make that back. You got the recording studio who owes on the building. That itself could be thousands of dollars every month. You got the electric. You got other random bills. The two main bills that they have is the equipment loan and the building loan. Understandable. Welcome to America. Oh, money? Wow, yeah, welcome to America. So I understand those two things. I'm not knocking them down. So when recording studios book rappers or singers or clients, I'm sorry to break everyone's fucking news to you. I'm sorry to be the bad one to say the breaking news, but it's to make money. It's to make more money than what they have to pay for the equipment loan and the building loan and the lights. They have to pay those three bills every month. So, yeah, when they charge you and they open up a recording studio, it's not to make a fucking hit. It's not to be your friend. It's not to take time because we really care about your project and we really care about the song. No. For most of the part, they don't. They have to make their equipment bill. And if you guys can't understand that, I don't know what to tell you. When you go on random recording studio sites, not just Chicago recording companies, the very first thing that they say is, we care about your music. There's the first lie. No, you care about making the building payment and you care about making the equipment payment. That's what you should really say if you really want to be honest. Now, if you don't believe me, that's fine. No worries. Fuck me. I'm stupid. You're smarter than... Right. You're smarter than me. So forget about the money because it's not the money, right? It has nothing to do with the money. No. With me, it has nothing to do with the money. And the reason why it has nothing to do with the money with me, me personally, because my equipment... It's already paid off for. That's just a fact of life. The building, I, I don't have a mortgage. I don't owe on the building. It's, al it's already paid off for. So those two things, I, I don't need to make up for that. And why is that? Why don't I owe on my equipment? Tell me. Since you're so smarter than me, you tell me. Because I'm a fucking genius. Because I'm past that fucking level. Because I don't deal with the fucking banks so they can fucking rob me. Because I didn't give no bank some collateral so they could give me a grand for 150000 and make me pay them back 250000 Because I don't do that. Because I don't need to do that. Now, am I a better person than you? Well, yeah. For many reasons. Not just that reason, though. I'm a better person than you because... I'm not judgmental. I'm a better person than you. Well, let's put that in the back burner. Let's put this in order. Hold on. I don't think most people believe me. My lounge is better than your lounge. And I'm doing this video because there's people who make comments. And I have a history with some amateurs. I, I can't even call them amateurs. My lounge is better than your lounge. It's a fact of life. My, my studio is worth more than that whole entire fucking building, in my opinion. Hands down, no questions asked. It's a fa you don't believe, okay. You don't believe me? That's fine. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. 
Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I'll show you. And this is just for fun. We're just having fun. I I'm bored. Well, let's go see the lounge. We'll come to the studio in a minute. Yeah, I see. Yeah, you see that drum machine back there from the NWA days. That's like $6,000 fucking right now. That's modified. Yo, you see that. Hold on. We'll come. Yeah, you see those original fucking Neves that cost $20,000 that you can't even find on the internet right now these days. That came from Vintage King legitimately, and I got the prices and the serial numbers. That came from David Grell's mixing board at Town City. Yeah, I know you see that. Hold on. Hold on. Let's start with the lounge. That's some fucking amateur motherfuckers from Columbia College. Talking about me? <laughs> right. All right. So here's my lounge. Just for kicks. It's a dart machine. My clients, they can play darts if they choose to. Have fun with it. It's a great dart machine. Hey, you see my commercial fridge? Yeah, that's a commercial fridge. What would you like to drink? We got... Light, Bud Light, Budweiser, MGD, do, do you have that at CRC? It's just a question. You got Light, Bud Light, Miller Genuine Draft, Coors Light, Corona, Corona Light, Summer Shandy for the women, 312, Maldonado. You got Smirnoff Ice, Mike's Hard Lemonade, Mike's Hard Lemonade Orange, Mike's Hard Lemonade Black Cherry, Jack Daniels, Big Wave. Do, do, you, do you have all these drinks at CRC? I can't even get to the studio. My bathroom is bigger than... My bathroom is nicer than yours. No, I will get to there too. You got Voodoo Ranger. You got Gumball Head. You got Alphabet King. You got Wonderland. You got Smirnoff Ice Lemonade. You got Not Your Fathers. You got Ippa. You got Fat Tire. You got Bex. You got Samuel Adams. Are you an alcoholic? Do you have this at CRC? This fridge costs $2,800. It's a commercial fridge. 2021, brand new. You see this sign right here? I, could, I should put the sign. I got the best studio in Chicago. And it ain't even open to the public. Seriously, since so many people want to comment and act all snotty with attitudes, and I'm, I'll, 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 I'll get to my freedom of speech with that later. Here, you want an RC? I'm the only one who has Pepsi products and Coca-Cola products in Chicago, if I'm not mistaken. When you go to restaurants, they got either Pepsi or Coke. What can I get you to drink? Oh, Pepsi? Oh, I'm sorry. We only have Coca-Cola products. Why didn't you say that, bitch? Why did you come to the table and ask me what I wanted to drink like you were about to give me anything I wanted? They only have Pepsi or Coca-Cola products, one or the other. I got both. I got Pepsi products, Coca-Cola products. I got RCA. I mean, I got RC. I got Ice Mountain. I got Hinkley Springs Water. I got Red Bull. I got Rain for you new generation. I got White Rain. I got Red Wine. I got almond fucking milk. You see the almond fucking milk? I got LaCroix. I got orange juice in the back. I got Diet Coke for you people who got a weight problem. I mean, seriously, do you want anything from the fridge? Do you have this at CRC? No, you don't. No, you don't. Let's go on, though. Oh, shit. Hard liquor. Hard liquor, nigga. <laughs> Hard liquor. What, what the fuck is this? What is all this? Tell me. What's all this? I got effing black cherry. I got effing rose. I got... Effin' Blood Orange, I got Malibu, I got HQ Hypnotic, I got Pineapple, I got Pineapple, I got Lemon Pineapple, I got Lime, I got Alien Vodka, I got Mel Garago, whatever the fuck that is, I got Bacardi Lime, I got Bacardi Syria, I got Bacardi Gold, I got Captain fucking Morgan, I got Tito's. I got margarita orange, I got margarita classic lemon, I got pink margarita, I got strawberry margarita. You got that at CRC? My lounge is better than yours. True story. Here, you want to sit back? You can kick back on the chair. Oh, huh, huh, fuck. Wait, wait, wait. Shit. Shit, what the fuck is that? It's an 85-inch Sony... HD television. 85 fucking inches. Your TV's old as fuck. No, it's a true story. Your TV's not as big as this. 
But your TV's old as fuck. This is 85 inch, brand new, 2020 fucking one. I got an air hockey table. Do you got air hockey? My clients who come in, and it's not even open to the public, true. My clients who could come in, they could play air hockey. Professional size. You could fuck on this air hockey table, and I wouldn't give two shits. Do you, do you got an air hockey table for your clients to fuck at CRC? No. You can't fuck at their studio. You could fuck at mine if you want to. Hey, you see this? You see that speaker? $1,000 for that one speaker. And that's just for entertainment. I don't even use that speaker to mix. That's just an entertainment speaker. $1,000. Just for that one speaker alone. Just, just to watch the game. J just to get all the dynamics. And it, it gets even better. So, so you don't like that alcohol? Here. Here you go. You can have this one. Anything there you want? Do you have this at CRC? You can sit at the fucking bar if you want. You can play slot machines if you want. Here, look, there's some more alcohol for my alcoholics. Look, look, you, you, there's a popcorn machine. You want some popcorn? Butter. You got a popcorn machine at CRC? Look, there's a cotton candy machine. Look, there's disco lights. There's a fogger. And, and, and this is just a bullshit little room. So I think I proved my point already. I can't even... I shouldn't be doing this video, man. I just did it to every fucking recording studio in Chicago. No, you want, here, you want to go upstairs? You want to see some video games? Do you play video games? I play video games. Here, here. Check this out. <laughs> this is a joke, man. I don't even know why I'm doing this. Look at this. Look at this. How many video game systems you think I got? How many video game systems you think I got? How many? I have them all. I have every single fucking video game system. There is. I got them all. You don't believe me? Okay, here. 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 Look, look, look. What's that? What's that? You see that? Look at that. Look. You got Nintendo. You got Super Nintendo. You got Nintendo 64. You got Nintendo Cube. You got Nintendo 360. Or no, you got Nintendo. Oh, fuck. Mind blank. Whatever those fuck those two things are. Oh, you got Wii. Nintendo Wii. You got Nintendo Wii U, you got Nintendo Switch, you got, uh, you got Sega, Genesis, you got Xbox, you got Xbox 360, you got PlayStation 1, huh, PlayStation 1 down there, you got PlayStation 2, you got PlayStation 3, you got PlayStation 4, you got the Xbox here, you got Nintendo games here, you got Atari, the original Atari games, I got the original Fogger, hold on, hold on, shit, hold on, hold on, fuck me man, look at that, I got the original Atari with every single fucking game, I got Sega Saturn, I got Sega, Sega Disc, I got the other Sega, whatever the fuck that is. I got a TV on the wall. That TV, just for kicks. So I could do both. I got this TV. You know why I got the TV on the wall? You know why? Because when my clients come, when they come, I don't want them to have to turn their head. Look up or look this way. It's another bar. Jesus Christ. I, 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 I can't do it. So I told you there was no competition. There was no competition. I meant that. I, I meant that. See, now I feel bad. I did it to everybody. Now I feel bad. They're like, damn. Damn, that fucking shit. My lounge sucks. Yeah, I know. Sucks compared to mine. So, well, let's go over this. Just for fun. Because I'm a fun person, like I said. I'm just having fun. Just having fun. Responding back. Just having fun. So, we already labeled all the good people at CRC. Or at least the ones from my experience. Now let's go over the stupid experiences. And what kind of gets me a little worked up. Now, not that much. Just, just a little bit. Just enough to do this video and have fun. Because some recording studio engineers, they like to do that. I meet someone, and, and I think this is where it all started. I meet someone at CRC 
And I'm arguing with them. They're arguing with me, but I guess I'm arguing back. No, I am arguing back. When a client goes into a recording studio, and this is why I don't go to recording studios anymore, because it ain't like the old days. When a client goes into a recording studio, the client typically knows what he or she wants, for most of the part. And the engineer does what the client requests. Now, if the client doesn't know what he or she is talking about, which sometimes it happens, the engineer picks it up. Okay, great. I always knew what I was talking about when I went to CRC many years ago. And the reason why I always knew what I was talking about is because I've been going to recording studios since I was a teenager, since I was like 13 years old. I, I've been to the best recording studios that you could possibly imagine, especially during that time. I met some great engineers like Larry Strom, Larry Shera. I, I, I worked with some really cool people, and they're not judgmental. So I go to CRC, and I ask if you guys have Neve 1073 preamps. I said, no, we got the clones. They're the same thing. Okay, they're not the same thing. No, they are the same thing. We'll just use them. No, they're not the same thing. I promise you, they're not the same thing. The Neve 1073 originals are not the same thing as the clones, as the fake ones. No, they are. All right. Okay, man. I'm just going to go home and get my Neve 1073s. And I'm going to bring them here. No, you're wasting your time. I am wasting my time. You're fucking right. I'm wasting my time dealing with you. I'm wasting my time arguing with you. I'm wasting my time trying to teach you when I don't want to teach you. I'm wasting my time in this debate with your brain and my brain. I'm wasting my time because you're here making a measly $150 or $250 an hour or whatever fucking cut it is. And I am way past that $250 an hour mark because I just don't do that. If you're okay with making $250 awesome, great, God bless, I'm not going to judge, but I'm not okay with making $250 fucking dollars an hour. I am not. That's just who I am. Again, it doesn't mean that I'm a better person than you, which I am, but it doesn't mean just because I'm not okay with making $250 an hour and you're okay with it, 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 that doesn't really mean anything. It just means that you and me aren't aligned. We're not synced. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my Neve 1073s. I'm going to go all the way back home. I'm going to take them out of my fucking rack. I'm going to bring my precious vintage Neve 1073s in your bullshit fucking room with your bullshit fucking attitude, argumental ass. And let's just get to work because I already booked this time and I got to wrap up this song for something I'm doing with someone else. So let, let's go. Okay. It, it, it gets better. I didn't know a studio like yours don't have original Neem 1073s. I really didn't know that. And for some of you, most of you are probably laughing at this. Some of the interns there were there and they were laughing their asses off. And I just looked and I just said, yeah, he doesn't like me because I got the original Neem 1073s and he got the clones. And then they start laughing. And then that engineer says, no, don't listen to him. Don't fucking listen to me, intern. Please don't listen to me. You you have the right not to listen to me, and you have the right to listen to him. You listen to whoever you would like. It's like young kids, 18, 19, 20. They're learning the ropes. Don't learn from me. I, I don't care. It makes no difference. Stick with him. Please. Stick with him. Let's see how far that gets you, by the way. Ask how many songs that he produced that it became a hit. Not someone who paid for the record sales and paid for the promotion. Ask him what hit song has he made. Ask him what hit record has he produced. Ask him what hit record has he tracked. Ask him his record and his track record. Because he's like fucking 45 or high 50s and he ain't got one fucking shit. But I just wanted to go and cut vocals so it didn't take anyone a genius to push record and fucking play while i'm in the vocal booth using the microphone thank god i got a new microphone because that's the only reason why i went there any fucking way but nevertheless i'm gonna go home and get my knees i gotta wrap this up that's fine now i meet someone new okay lucky fucking me i'm gonna mix this song on this fucking old ass ssl fucking board i'm gonna go for it the snare Fucking Dennis. 
And I ain't mad at him. He's a funny guy. He's a very funny guy. I like, I, I, he's a funny guy. Arguing the whole time about the snare. The snare's too loud. No. No, the snare's not too loud. I like it this way. No, it's too loud. Let's bring it down. All right, man, so let me get this straight. I'm paying you by the fucking hour. I'm paying for the room by the fucking hour. And altogether, it's a total of like $1,500, which, you know, it is what it is. But that's what I agreed to. And I have the room for about eight hours. And you're going to use my time and argue with me about the fucking snare. But let's go ahead and keep arguing about it, I guess. It, it's not your time. It's my time. Let, let's continue arguing. So we're arguing about the snare. Literally, arguing, going back and forth. And I'm not mad at the time. I'm just sitting back like you're really, you're serious. I'll teach you about the fucking snares. Obviously, God put you in my life and I, God put me in your life. Let's go over the fucking snare. The snare is one of the most important part of the song. Because it's always going, ch, ch, ch. You got the boom, ch, boom, boom, ch. Boom. It's important because you're hearing the snare every second. You're hearing the snare every half a second, depending on the tempo. So I want to fatten that snare up. I'm going to take that snare and I'm going to put it on my fucking two inch tape because I want to fatten it up. I'm going to put another sound effect on the snare because I want to fatten it up. I want the snare up front. That's my snare. That's why I like the snares. I do snares. It's my snare. Please just leave it alone in the mix. Nope, still arguing. Nope, still don't understand. Nope, didn't understand my logic. Okay, let's understand this. I like Cypress Hill. Cypress Hill, I grew up listening to it. Their snares, they were fat. They were loud. They were humongous. They spent a lot of time on the fucking snare. I like the snare. Leave me alone. Nope, still arguing. It's okay, man. It's cool. No worries. I'm just going to wrap this up. Don't touch that fucking... Don't touch that fader, please. Leave it alone. Don't touch the fader. Okay? After about 20 minutes going back and forth with that, and of course you're going to say that's not a long time. Yeah, 20 minutes is a long fucking time when you're paying $300 an hour or whatever you're paying for the whole day. That, 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 that's a long time. But nevertheless, all right, I'm going to go to my car. I'm going to put this... I want to listen to the mix in my car. Why are you doing that? <sighs> Fuck Dennis. I'm going to do that because I want to see how this mix sounds in my car. That's why I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that because that's what I want to fucking do, Dennis. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Because you get the whole surround sound in the car, Dennis. I'm going to do that because the majority of the people who listen to music besides their iBuds, they listen to it in their car, Dennis. I'm going to fucking go listen to my goddamn mix in the car. Leave me alone. Okay, we'll wait for you, I guess. No, you will fucking wait for me because I'm paying you. I didn't say I'm going to the car and listen to the mix and while I'm in the car, stop your fucking clock with the salary. I didn't go to Sarah and say, hey, I'm going to the car to listen to this mix. Can you stop the studio time for that room? I did not say that. You're still getting paid. Okay, I guess. <laughs> I like him. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking bad about him. I like him, believe it or not. He, he's a character. So I'm going to my car, and I come back. We need to turn this back up. It doesn't, the, the hi-hat is missing. We need to turn it up. No, you don't want to turn that up. I just left the fucking car, Dennis. I, I just left the car. I just heard it in the car. I heard it on this monitor. I heard it on that monitor. I just heard the fucking shit. It's not there. It, it's not fucking there. I just, I just want to turn it back up. And I got to fucking say, please, I'm going to turn it up. Don't fucking touch that third fader, please. Don't touch it. Please don't touch it. Okay. So we're done with that and it goes further on, but it's okay. It's all right. No worries. No worries. I find out to be, I need another push in the record and play on my vocals. All right. Where's Dennis? I, I guess, I mean, I'm, I'm where's he at? 
Oh, he, he's busy for the whole future. <laughs> the big, the big reverse psychology, the, the big U-turn. I thought you needed 300 fucking dollars, Dennis. Uh, okay. He's busy. I guess give me somebody else. I, I guess. I don't care who it is. I just need someone to push record and play. And the only reason why I can't do that is because I can't be in a vocal booth and a control room at the same time. But I just find it interesting and fascinating. All of a sudden, he's busy for the whole future. Pretty much what he's saying is, I ain't working with Eric no more. I mean, you kind of just fucked up the biggest and coolest opportunity in your career to work with me. No fucking joke at all, and I sincerely mean that. But it's cool. You don't have to. I just find it the big U-turn, because if God and Jesus Christ were here now, and we had the whole session with you and me that one first and only last day, he would be looking and scratching his head like, wow. But no worries. You don't need the 300 bucks. You got plenty of clients and other stuff. So we'll move forward. So we, we move forward. Now we go on to the next. This is where it gets really fucked up. And I'm just sitting back like, all right, I, I, I guess this happened. I, I, I'm still scratching my head, but it's, it's all good. It, it's cool. It, it's really fucked up. It's funny. It's funny and it's really fucked up. I'm going to laugh because that's all you can do at this point. So I'm working on this movie. And I have shot scenes in Chicago that no motherfucker has. I have been to places that no motherfucker has. And everyone's still scratching their heads. Hey, how did you film inside of there? Hey, how did you do that? Hold on, no one has ever filmed a scene in this building before. How did you do that? G g remember? Do I gotta explain it? Because I am me. You are you. I know, Empire, that shitty fucking TV show, that, that, that place has never filmed in places that I have. Chicago Fire, that's not even a fucking reel about Chicago firefighters because I know Chicago fighter f firefighters and they hate that fucking corny show. They have never filmed in places I have. Chicago PD, that, that corny ass fucking show where the majority, if not all, Chicago cops hate that fucking show because they took the name Chicago Police and they portrayed the Chicago Police a certain way and in reality, it has absolutely nothing to do with the Chicago Police Department. Nothing to do with it, but they're stealing their name and somehow it's a hit from stupid people who just glued on to the TV and think this is the way the Chicago police work. No, I, I met a Chicago police officer who works in Inglewood back in 2016. I asked him, what do you think about that show, Chicago PD? He just looked and rolled his eyes and said, it's fucking stupid. I live this job. I do it every single fucking day. They're portraying us and that's not even the way it works, but it's legal. It's legal. So I'm working on this movie. And they have an ADR department, which I don't do. And I don't do ADR work. And just so you know what the fuck that means, it means when someone does their lines on TV, they say their lines, I love you, I love you so much, and the microphone sucks, the room that they said it sucked, the set or the location sucked, there was a car passing by. So you take the video of you saying, I love you, and then that video goes into a studio, and then that person sits in a fucking booth, and it's torture, and then you have to say the words in a microphone such as that, I love you, the same exact way, and you have to sync it up, it's torture. I hate doing that more than anything. I'd rather be back in prison because at least in my prison cell I could just sit back and do nothing and stare at the ceiling and just think of just how corrupt everything is and be depressed peacefully. With ADR work, I have to sit there, I have to watch a screen, I have to say I love you in the exact same way. It's, a, it's horrible. It's stupid. So I, I do ADR work that they have there. I have to do a scene. One scene there. Maybe two. No, actually three. Allow me to take that back. I got to do three. No worries. I meet the wonderful Angel Sarah for the music department. And I tell her I have this whole soundtrack that I have to do to record vocals only. And I want to try a mix just for kicks. What's the price? She gives me this package deal. And I agree to that package deal. And it's for the whole entire soundtrack. It's for the whole project until it's done. Sarah is great for business. Honest person, as I said. Good for business. You could trust her with a million bucks. So, after about six months, nine months, or a year, 
I give her the money, as we go along, and I finish the project. Great! It was awesome. So now I gotta meet Rose to do the ADR work. And there's an hourly rate. How many hours is it? I don't know. How many hours is it gonna take? We'll find out. So she gives me just an hourly rate for the package until my project is done. Okay, awesome. I get there. The first day, it's uncomfortable. But it's okay, I get through it. I book it the second time. Now I have actors coming in. I have like two or three people who have to come in and do this shit. And I'm paying for it. I'm paying for the studio time. I'm paying for her engineer, Mark. And I'm paying these actors and actresses. So it, it's a lot of money. And everything needs to go right for those three hours. It's like $250 an hour. Literally. 250 bucks Times three. and just It's a lot of money. Everything needs to go right. <clears throat> okay, Eric, you're booked for Friday. All right, great. 9 to 12, 9 to 1. Okay, cool. I tell my actors, I tell my actresses, I tell my street cats, because they're really not actors, they're street cats from Inglewood. I tell them we're going to be at this place. They have to get there from Inglewood to Chicago Recording Company. That's a long, you know, you got to prepare for it. Cool. No worries. It'll be worth it, I think. I get an email the night before. Eric, I have to cancel on you. Okay. Death in the family? an emergency i type i hope everything's all right no everything is fine i just have the lottery people who emailed me and they need to come in and take your spot for friday you're you're shitting me right this is what i'm thinking in my head the lotto so hold on let me get this straight and it's funny because it's the lotto let me get this straight Besides, before I say fuck me, you're telling me I book studio time for $250 or whatever the magic number is, 200 and something. I asked all my people from Inglewood to please prepare and get ready and don't be late, be 15 minutes earlier. Come all the way from the south side of Chicago, go to downtown, find parking. They all cleared their schedules, including mine. Just to tell me that the people from the lottery are more important than us? I mean, pretty much is what it comes down to. I mean, how fucked up is that? No, I'm not stupid. I'm not naive. Okay, it's the lottery. They have money. See, I'm, I'm not like that. That's the difference between you and me. That's the difference between Mark and me. That's the difference between Rose and me. I'm not like that. I don't give a fuck if it's Jeff Bezos. And if it is Jeff Bezos, I'm going to tell my client, hey, can I ask you a question? I'm an honest person. I know I booked you for Friday. And I know the hassle that it's going to be. Well, actually, you, you, you don't, they don't, Rose doesn't know the hassle. She just didn't give a fuck. But I know, I can only imagine the hassle that it's going to be for you to come to downtown. Um... I got Jeff Bezos who just contacted me. He wants to come in on Friday. And I don't want to tell him no. Do you mind if I give you another day and I'll knock off 50% of the price, please, out of respect, just because I really want to work with Jeff Bezos? That's, that's what I would have done. And if my client would have told me no, I would have went to Jeff Bezos and I would have respectfully said, hey, Jeff I like you, I admire you, I admire that you came up with a great invention from your garage and now it's worldwide and you're one of the richest men ever. I like the fact that you have an idea where you save people on their time and on their gas so they don't have to go anywhere and you deliver the products to their front doorstep ASAP. I admire the fact that you have drones and you want to have drones and you're coming up with some new crazy technology that we could never do and you're going to have drones drop off our packages to our front door. I truly admire that. Um, but with all respect, I already booked for Friday for some people who are humans. Can I book you for Saturday or Sunday or Monday, please? Please. That's what I would have done. And you know what Jeff Bezos probably would have said? Jeff Bezos probably would have said in the back of his head, this guy has integrity. 
This guy is honest. This guy, wow. Jeff Bezos probably would have went to his wife and said, I just tried to book something with Eric and he told me no because he had other clients. And his wife probably would have laughed and said, who the fuck is more important than you? It's not that they're more important. It's that I'm a man of honor. I have integrity like that. But not Rose. But it's okay. It's funny. It's hee hee ha ha. It's just funny, I guess. The fucking lottery is more... (laughs) The lottery. It's cool. But it gets worse. It's not just that. The more I keep letting things go, the more they keep piling on. So the lottery is more important than me. The lottery people are more important than Inglewood. Hey, lottery, if you're watching this, do you know you took my fucking spot? I I bet you don't know, but I don't hold it against the lottery. They don't know about that. I'm sure if they found out, they would probably say that's kind of fucked up. And CRC, or at least Rose, doesn't have integrity like that. But it's cool. It's legal. It is what it is. But it gets worse, though. It gets completely fucking worse. It gets really fucked up. So I go to CRC and I meet Mark. Fucking wonderful. (laughs) Just fucking great. I have never met an engineer in my whole entire life who was just unprofessional, argumental, probably, and I'm not saying this for a fact, probably a fucking bigot who's a racist, I have never met an engineer in my whole entire life like him. At least Dennis was funny about it. Mark is not funny at all about it. I go in there and I have two street cats from Inglewood. Call them what you will, because I know what you're thinking. Two street cats from Inglewood. He has to do his lines in the vocal booth. Okay. Hey, can you do me a favor? Can you take off your hat? That's what I ask him. My project, I ask him to take off his hat. The reason why, and I shouldn't have to explain this, but the reason why I asked to take off his hat is because when you're in front of the microphone, the hat interferes with the microphone. That's just a fact of life. We'll get into that later. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to teach. I'm not here to teach, but I I guess I fucking have to. I got to explain myself, and I don't want to explain myself, but I have to. I'm forced to. I'm forced to be your fucking friend. So I asked him if he could take off his hat. Big dude, too. Big-ass fucking gangbanger. And I'm asking him to take off his hat. I'm from the streets. I know how to come correct with people. I know how to respect people. I know how to talk to people. I know how to ask people. Yeah, cool. He's on his way taking his hat off. What does Mark say? No, you don't have to do that. (laughs) Wow, man, I can't. I I can't. (laughs) I can't. I can't, man. All right, man. I'm paying 200 and something fucking bucks an hour. You're some young person who works for probably 150 bucks an hour. You have to stay in this fucking shitty ass studio for God only knows how many hours. And you probably don't want to for a fucking check for $4,000. And that's a lot of money to you. But you're going to tell me, no, he doesn't have to. Okay, no one has to do any fucking thing in life. You have your own free will, okay? It's my session. It's my project. I'm paying for the shit. So with all respect, I'm asking him to, and he complied because I've been working with him for over six fucking months, and this is what we do. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't... Okay, look, man. Look, look. Fucking shit! Look, 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 look. See this microphone here? You see this? Yeah, I got this too. Okay, I know. Warner Brothers uses it all the time. Yeah, I got it too. I got it too. Okay? I'm sitting here. I'm talking, right? I take off my hat. The sound is different. You're not supposed to rap. With the fucking hat. 
You're not supposed to do ADR work with the fucking hat. I might as well just have this rim lid, put it here and here, and watch it go different. There's a reason why there's a switch on this microphone so it can get the whole entire fucking room. There's a reason why the switch is on this microphone so it can just get straight close up and not the whole entire fucking room. You don't rap. You don't sing with the hat on. You don't do ADR work with the hat on. Even with the pencil microphone, you don't have a hat on. That's just common sense when you really do this. But you know what? You could have a hat on for your clients and you could lie to them and you could give them some false information and a bullshit education all you fucking want to. That's your right. And if they want to believe you, that's one of the beautifulest things about living in America. They can believe you. And they could take their fucking hat and put two fucking hats on. But when I come in and I'm paying an arm and a leg for the studio time and I'm using this gangbanger's fucking valuable time, I'm requesting that his hat comes off. Do I have to fucking say please? But no, it doesn't work that way. So at the time, I tell him and I ask him, yeah, please take it off. And now the gangbanger is sitting there like, all right, which one? I mean, of course he listens to me, but I mean, he's just kind of like, what, what, what the fuck? Don't do that to him. This is what's wrong with this new generation. I guess I'm different because I came from Bridgeport. I guess I'm different because I spent a lot of time in the projects. I guess I'm different because I spent a lot of time at the Robert Taylor homes. I, I know how to, I, I know not to bother people. I, I just know. I, I'm a different individual. I, I know things could get out of control real fast with some of these people from the streets. I, I guess I'm different because I grew up with Italians and I watched how they work if you did one little wrong thing. I guess I'm different with respecting people. I, I, I come correct. So he's sitting there just, and I'm sitting there like, fuck, man. I kind of, I'm sorry, Mr. Gangbanger. I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry that we're arguing back and forth. I'm sorry that we're telling you to do two different things. I know you're not used to that. I know you're not used to a motherfucker telling you what to do. I apologize to you. And I don't know what to say about him. I'm fucking sorry. I am. I, I feel foolish for bringing you here. I didn't know this was, was how it was going to be. I guess I should have learned my lesson from the fucking lottery stand up. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I, I'm stupid. I brought him there. And I got to argue. It's my fault. I'm responsible. Fuck. I, I don't like to do that. I, I don't like to argue with people. I don't argue. That's just not my motto. But it gets worse. It gets fucking worse. So you're probably saying to yourself at this point, why are you still going there? I'm not going there. And I stopped going there for the obvious fucking reasons. But at the time I had to finish the project because I already started it. So I need to finish it. And I didn't even get to do that. But I'm going to finish it fucking now. I, 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 I'm going to have to stop it now without it being finished because they didn't keep their promise to me. So as we continue on, I bring in this footage, and this footage is expensive. It was done on expensive cameras, expensive lenses, expensive camera people. It's a footage, and it's, it's unique, and no one has it. What do I ask Mark? Hey, when I leave this building, can you put the work that we do on my hard drive, and then after we're done, it's on my hard drive, can you delete it from your system, please? Oh, well, we normally save everything. Oh, yeah. There he, go. there he goes again. There he goes again. There he goes again. I don't care. It... <laughs> Look, man. I don't care what you normally fucking do. I'm not normal. Do I look normal to you? Do I sound normal to you? Do I sound like I'm politically correct to you? Do, there's nothing so-called normal about me. What the fuck is normal any fucking way? I'm asking you to delete the footage when I leave, once it's on here and we confirm it two times. Please. And I said please. Because I'm, I'm like that. I always say please. I typically say yes sir, yes ma'am, please. Yeah, okay. With an attitude. Okay. Do I have to explain why? Yeah, I guess I do. I, I guess I fucking do. I, I gotta be the teacher. I gotta be the professor. 
I gotta be the real per person at Columbia College, which sucks, by the way. <laughs> you know I got better equipment than fucking Columbia College, right? Which which is a joke, by the way, considering that's the American education in Chicago. It's a joke. Columbia College is a joke. I'm sure you guys went there. Oh, look, I got my degree. You got a fucking piece of paper. My friend, he could scan that and erase someone's name and put my name on there, too. I don't want a degree from Columbia College. It's a joke. Stop listening to the American propaganda. It's not me. But go ahead. No, you know what? I apologize. You could listen to it all you fucking want. Just, just erase the fucking footage. Just, just do what I ask, please. It's my shit. Just do what I ask, please. Thank you. The reason why you should always erase the footage when it's very important, because hackers hack shit all the fucking time. And when hackers hack shit all the fucking time, I'm fucked. The customers are fucked. The clients are fucked. And all the corporations and all the companies, they don't even issue an apology. Because if they issue an apology, that admits guilt. And then a lawyer will sue them and say, look, this company just issued an apology. You know how many times Dr. Dre, and I learned, maybe that's where I got it from. Because I learned from his experiences, his shitty ass experiences. You know how many times someone stole Dr. Dre's music from the studio? Because someone hacked in the Pro Tools? And then the news reporter, they ask him about that on the red carpet and stuttering, instead of admiring Dr. Dre and his great mixes and his production and his success, they ask him on the red carpet, hey, how do you feel about those people who stole your music and leaked it? And he just said, well, people like to steal. What can I say? You know what? You can't steal my music. And you can't steal my movie footage because it's not on your system. Because Mark deleted it, right, Mark? You, you deleted it, right? Well, no, here's an attitude. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'll delete it. I mean, do you want to watch it? Do you want to get to tell your friends I worked on this with Chicago Blacks again? Just let me know. Because I'll say, yeah, you did do one part. Obviously, I'm making it clear you got to work with me. I don't know why you don't want to delete it. I have no fucking idea. But nevertheless, here we go arguing. It's like Target. Secret Service investigated Target. Hundreds of thousands of information and credit cards were stolen. Identities from Target. Oh, wow. Target doesn't even issue an apology. They just do a release that says we're made aware of the situation and we're looking into it. Wow, man. Wow. So that's why I asked to delete it. But don't, we, we don't have to worry about that because I don't, I don't go anywhere and everything is here. So we don't have to worry about that. All my shit, it's on another computer offline. It's on another system that's offline. So <clears throat> it's nearly impossible to hack some good fucking songs and footage that I have. But I guess I got to explain myself. But it gets worse. It gets worse than that with me and Mark. This is where it gets really fucked up. I got to finish this project. We can't finish it because COVID happened. So, half the project's finished that I wasted, I don't even know, probably like $3,000. Half the project I spent $3,000 on, approximately, give or take, and I have another $3,000 to go. So, it's probably about $6,000 for the whole entire project, for the whole entire scene, for doing this. I want to do the other half. That costs three grand. But I get an email back, or they call me back, and they say, we can't let no one in due to COVID. Okay. I understand that that's what goes on. It's it's COVID time. I, I, I don't like it, but I'm a reasonable person. Cool. When are you guys opening back up? We don't know. Check back with us. Okay. I got to do, do the other half, but it's cool. So six months goes by. Five months goes by. Somewhere around there. And I call back and say, hey, can I book and finish the rest of this project, please? I, I have to do this. Oh, yeah. You could. Um... But the price went up to three hundred and fifty dollars, or somewhere around that. And I, I have the emails. But just to be fair, the first package was two hundred and something dollars. The price went up dramatically to like three hundred and something dollars, almost double the price. So I email Rose. I call Rose. Wait, I thought we had a deal where I finished this project and you were going to give me this rate for the whole entire project. Yeah, the prices went up, sorry. 
Thank you for understanding. No. <laughs> uh, lady, I don't understand. I, I don't understand at all. I'm not agreeing to this. We had an agreement where I give you 200 and something dollars for this project, and that's why I agreed to spend the $3,000 that I did, because we had that agreement. So now that COVID happened, just like a lot of other people, I decided to go along with the system and say, I understand, that's the law, got to follow it. But now that COVID's over, I would like to continue on from the original deal that we had and the original agreement, the reason why I went to you from the get-go. No, it's double. Wow. Okay. So the state government fucks you, and in return, you decide to fuck me. I know. This is what makes me not normal. Everyone else is going along with the shit, but see, I don't. I know why you doubled the price, because the state government has fucked you, and when the state government fucks corporations and companies, in return, the corporations and companies fuck us. I'm just asking you to keep your original deal. And the only reason why I'm asking that is, one, I already know you're a liar. You proved that to me. I already know you're bad for business. You proved that to me, too. I'm just doing everything I possibly can because I've already started this project with you, so now I have to finish it. I can't go to another studio because the room will sound different. The microphone will sound different. And even if I get the same microphone, the room is still different. It won't match. And I don't want to go through that anyway. I want to finish what we agreed on. Please. No, the price is still double. All right. Fuck, man. I don't call women bitches, but fucking bitch, man. Are you really money fucking hungry? Okay, Rose. That's cool. Fine. Fine. I'll pay the 350 fucking bucks for the hour, even though that's not the agreement. I wish I dealt with Sarah. I wish I could deal with Sarah for the rest of my fucking life. I even said that. Can I even ask Sarah? It's not my department. Sorry. All right. Thank you. Don't, no, no, sorry. Rose fucking sucks, man. But that's fine, Rose. Here's a 300 and something fucking dollars. Book me for another eight hours. Whatever it is, so I could just wrap this up and I'm done with you fucking people there i'm it's done just go ahead okay um we have a little problem now what rose mark said he saw you on the news and he's a little uncomfortable dude dude Dude, people. Okay. Okay. Let me just catch my breath. Just. <laughs> Look, man. Look. I'm not here to make people comfortable. I'm sorry. I don't really care, and I mean this in the nicest way. I don't care what he saw on the news. It doesn't matter to me. I just want to wrap this up. That's it. Yeah, well, Mark likes to get to know you. Those were her words on the phone to me. He, he likes to get to know his clients. He wants to get to know you. I don't want to get to know him. And I don't care what he likes to do with his clients. I don't think me and him have much in common. I don't want to get to know him. So I find out later on, he did a Google search. He's been Googling my fucking name from day one. His engineer even told me that. This was before the recent news of last year. This was like two years ago. He Googled my name. Someone told me. Why are you Googling me? What, is that the, why are you Googling me? When I go to fucking Target. The manager doesn't Google me. He takes my fucking money. When I get my oil change, the person at the oil change don't Google me. He takes my money. Yeah, he fucking knows me. But he takes my fucking money. Why are you Googling me? Why are you Googling me? And you know what? It's your right. You can Google me. Go ahead. You can Google me. That, that's what it's there for. But don't tell me about it. 
I don't want to know. I don't care. I don't care what you believe. I'm not talking about that anymore either, by the way. Believe what you will. It's in the newspaper, so it must be true. Why are you Googling me? Well, okay, Rose, what, what does that have to do with anything? I ask her. What? He just wants to get to know you. He likes to get to know all his clients. Rose, I don't want to get to know him. I, I just want to do this project and finish it and be done. That's it, Rose. I've already got fucked by you by the lottery. I already got fucked by you by you canceling out on me. I already got fucked by you by the price because you doubled the price. I already got fucked by... I just want to finish this. I have to finish it. I must finish it. Please. Can we just work? Please. Never mind. I'm done. It just... We won't finish it. So I got my one project that's halfway done, and the other half is not halfway done because Mark wants to get the fucking know me. Wow, man. No, no. It, wow. What do you want to get to know me? Seriously, what makes you uncomfortable with me? I mean, let, let's just open up the door. I'm just exercising my freedom of speech since since we're here. Is it the name Blacksican? I don't know. I think it is, to be very honest with you. I'm not going to say for sure. I don't pull out the race card like most bitches do. Because you know what? Being a racist and not liking someone with the name Blacksican or someone's skin color or someone's political views, being racist, believe it or not, it's perfectly fucking legal. A lot of people don't know that. You have the right not to like someone because of their political views. You have the right to not like someone because of their skin color. You have the right to not like someone because of their rap name. You th That's fine. Is that what it is? Man up and say it out loud. I don't care. You don't like me. Great. But let's just work and finish what I started. That that said, oh, I, well, well, what do you want to know? Well, they say you stole $2 million back in 2008. You believe that? It, it's on the news. The, you, you, a corrupt politician in Illinois never lied? You believe that? Fine. You know what? Believe it. I don't care because even if you didn't believe it and if you believe me, it still ain't going to change my situation. So I don't care if you believe me. You could believe every fucking thing that comes out of any state politician's mouth in Chicago. God bless. That's who you are. That's why we have the government we have is probably from people like you. You probably voted for the corrupt politician who lied against me. I, I don't care. I don't care. And even if I did care, I'm a rapper. I'm supposed to fucking steal money. Even if that was true. But nevertheless. Well, you threatened a politician last year. Yeah, that I'm guilty on. Yeah, I made that video. Yeah, and I don't deny that. And I should have never done that. I just lost control because of what they did to me 10 years ago. Or no, 13 years ago. But yeah, I did. I made that video. And I'm guilty. And I pled guilty. And I admitted it. And I manned up. Because I'm not a pussy. And it's not going to happen again. And I'm over with. And I'm done with it. And that's be it is what it is. Do you want to know why? No, of course someone like you doesn't want to know why. It doesn't make it right. But so what? So now what? Now what do you want to know? You are you. You are a peon. You are a politician's best fucking dream. You are someone who just goes along with the system. You are someone who just has no voice at all. You are someone who doesn't want to try to make a change. You are someone who goes into the studio and just copies and pastes for most of the part for your career. You are someone who makes like 250 bucks an hour or whatever it may be. You are someone who's known to be grumpy and other people have told me this when you go get your coffee every day. You are just you. I am me. I am someone who likes to make a difference. If you really want to know, I am someone who likes to make a difference in the world. I am someone who believes life is too short. I am someone who cares and who has a big heart. I'm someone who's not racist. I'm someone who's not judgmental. I'm someone who wants to leave planet Earth a little bit better than what it was when I came in. I'm someone who likes to make history. I'm someone. I'm just different. We're different. We are different. You are you. And I am me. You're normal. You're, you're again, you're a politician's wet fucking dream. I'm a politician's worst fucking nightmare. I talk back. I question. I protest. I, 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 I went to Rob Lagojevich's home with the fucking camera right in his front fucking door. You would never dare of thinking of doing that. Never. But when he sells Obama's former presidency and he gets a jail out of free card because he knows Trump, well, then you wonder why it costs millions of dollars. No, actually, you don't even wonder why your taxes are the way they are. 
You don't even wonder. You just say, oh, well, the government made my taxes again. I'm just going to pay for them. No! I have to pay higher taxes because of people like Rob Lagojevich. So, yeah, I went to his house and I protested along with a lot of other people by his front fucking door. Yeah, I, that's what I do because I may be considered an activist. I care about those things because there's people sitting in jail who doesn't know Donald Trump. There's people sitting in jail who doesn't have those connections. So, yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, that's who I am. Well, you, what do you do? What do you protest? I, I went to your website just for kicks because you went to mine, so I go to yours. Oh, Mark likes to go to fancy restaurants. On his spare time. <laughs> what does fancy restaurants have to do with fucking mixing? Do you honest to God, someone who's looking to mix a record, they're going to go to your website and they're going to be intrigued with, oh, he likes to go to try new restaurants? Oh, wow, that's fucking great. What the fuck? But you know what? It's cool. You Google me, I Google you. My shit comes up. I'm a rapper. That's what's supposed to be. I, I, I'm a minority. That's how I got fucked for the first part, not the second part. I, I'm a minority and I'm poor. That, that, that's just the way life goes, man. And I accept it. There's nothing I can fucking do. You, your website, I like to try fancy restaurants. <laughs> just, and it gets worse though. It's not even just that. Then you got this little fucking engineer Gabe. Those little fucking short people. Short people, they never fucking liked me my whole entire fucking life. I'm walking down a studio, and I see some little short motherfucker, and I just say, hey, how you doing? Because I'm nice like that. And he just looks at me with his big-ass fucking glasses from 1980s, looking like the Empire guy from the carpet commercial on fucking crack. Right? The fuck? At the time, I didn't know who he was. At the time, I just saw some little stoner-ass, geeky, nerdy, short, ugly motherfucker. So I said, hi, walking by. Hey. The, the fuck are you, you, you little fucking shit, what the fuck? Oh, uh, no worries, man. The, uh, you're having a bad day, I don't know, the fucking weed didn't inhale, I don't know what your problem is, but it's cool, man, don't, don't worry about it, shorty, just, I, I'm gonna keep going, you keep going. Just get out of here, man. So, and it gets worse. So later on, I hear Chance the Rapper, his music. And I, I want to see his mixes. I, I want to hear his mixes. Not interested in him. I'm interested in his mixes. Because I like Chance the Rapper when it comes to political stuff. When Rahm Emanuel didn't talk to Chance the Rapper and he left City Hall, I was actually going to go up there that day and say, Hey, Rom. Chance the Rapper is a young person. You're old as fuck. Don't do that to him. I don't know his music. I don't know him. I don't know anything about him. I just know there's some rapper from Chicago who took the time to go to City Hall to meet your old fucking corrupt ass. And you decide to leave? Get back here, Rom, and talk to him. That, that was my frame of mind back then, but it happened too fast and it was already over with and Chance said that he wasn't here to speak to Rom, which was fine. So I like Chance the Rapper's political drive. So I do a little research on him. Chance the Rapper comes from money. Chance the Rapper's dad was a fundraiser for Obama. Not really much to be proud of because Obama didn't do nothing for all of us like we thought he was, but he's rich. Okay. So I'm interested in looking at Chance the Rapper's music, his mixes, not his rap lyrics, not his performance. His mixes fucking suck. They're horrible. It's a plastic garbage. The mix, the quality. If you're in a concert, you want to be front row, second row, third row, fourth row, fifth row, back row. Chance the Rapper's mixes are like in the back row. His snares, it's plastic. So I do some engineer, I do some research and see who the fuck is his engineer. Because they're fucking this guy shit up. And I just want to do it for free. No money, no recognition, no credit. I just want to do it for free to try to help his political career. It's that same motherfucker Gabe who looked at me like this and said, hey, what's up? The fuck? Okay, it all makes sense now. 
I guess he Googled me too. I'm sorry. I'm not a pussy rapper. I'm not a radio fucking rapper. I'm not polit. I'm sorry. Let me just apologize to all you individuals, okay? I'm not your pussy fucking rapper from the suburbs. I know they said I was from the suburbs in the Chicago Tribune. That was a lie. Do your research. I didn't go to school there. I'm not politically correct. I used to try to fight the fucking system. I do swear. I did prison time. I'm a fucking rapper. These are the things that I'm supposed to fucking do. And these new rappers, I I guess do what your record company tells you to do. I guess rap about the fucking front yard and the back fucking yard. That's not how rap is, at least not the way it originally was. This is getting a lot longer than what I expected it to be. Good luck, man. I, I, I can't wait for CRC to go out of business, to be honest with you. I'm kind of going to laugh my whole entire fucking ass off when I find out CRC has gone out of business. I actually feel terribly bad for the people who go to Chicago Recording Company. And it's not just because of those three individuals. Because remember, in life, you got some people who like you and you got some people who don't. It's for the three individuals, put them on the back burner and they're, they just suck. You have the three individuals who are really good, like Bruce, Sarah, and John, and Chris... But the equipment sucks. It's old. And it hasn't been updated. And I feel bad for your projects. You say Smashing Pumpkins has been there. Yeah, Smashing Pumpkins was there back in like the year 2000s. And they had their own engineer. They didn't use the engineer from CRC. Trust me. And then you'd have the, 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 the thing of Lady Gaga. That music is plastic. Not the lyrics. Not her. The mixes are plastic. But you see the studio and you're like, wow, this is big. Wow, this is huge. Wow, this is it. No, the equipment sucks. The engineers suck. If you don't believe me, ask the engineer, what have they done? What project have you worked on? Oh, I, I, we did that movie with Spike Lee, Chirac. <laughs> you're proud of that movie? He spent $1.6 million to make that movie. He made $1.6 million, if I'm not mistaken. You're proud of that movie? That movie went, it, it did horrible. And that's something you're proud of? I mean, I guess if you're proud of it, cool. All the songs. You got to get a good engineer. You know it takes me three weeks to mix one song? You know it takes Dr. Dre three weeks to mix one song? Our motives are just different. Your motive is money and paying the bills. My motive is to leave something good on planet. Our motives are just different. So I, I think I did a good job with teaching the people that God put in my fucking life. It, thanks for just reneging on your deal i guess try to try to be more like sarah you try to try to be like her i i would say mark should hang out with john and bruce for like two months straight D don't be judgmental D -d don't don't D don't be judgmental larry strom he was a great engineer he's in heaven right now he he, he wasn't judgmental i once upon a time asked larry strom hey what do you think of this rap song he goes i can't give an opinion like, why not can't be judgmental I can only give you opinion on EQ, not the lyrics itself. <laughs> All right, cool. That's just the way it goes. I could have a white supremacist contact me, and you would probably say to yourself, you're going to work with him? Yeah. You know why? Because I want to understand him. I want to see what he's talking about. I want to see what he's going through. I want to see his experience. I want to try to make and take his shitty ass experience to a good one. So I'm going to talk to him. But see, not you. You see blacks again. You see the prison. You're like, oh, no, 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 I don't want to deal with them. I want to deal with the light-skinned rapper from the suburbs. Right. You know the Art Institute? To get political, I might as well just show my true colors now. You know the Art Institute just pretty much said they're firing all the white people? The white volunteers, or whatever you want to call them. Pretty much the bottom line is, whatever you call them, the white dozers. They just said, we're going to fire all the white people so we could hire people of color. Well, I'm considered of someone of so-called color. That's what you guys think. I'm an American. That's all I label myself with. You don't think that was wrong for what they just did? By saying we're going to get rid of the white people? Would you speak up for those white people? Can you imagine those white ladies at the dinner table going home to their sons who are younger 
saying I just got fired because of the color of my skin. I'm white. Do you wonder why certain white people don't like certain black people and Mexican people? You wonder why we're fucking hated? Yeah, because of that bullshit right there. So if I have this white supremacist coming in who wants to do a rock song and he's talking about this, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to tell him, you're right. And I don't want you to hate me because I didn't fire your grandma. I, I was pissed off when I saw that. I was angry. But I'm out of politics. I don't do that anymore. But just for the record, if you're asking, I'm very upset. The old Eric, if this was last year, the old Eric, I, I would have went to the Art Institute. I would have found out who runs the Art Institute. I would have went to their homes with my camera. And I would have said, what the fuck are you doing being a racist? What the hell are you doing firing all these white people because of the color of their skin? Now they're going to hate me even fucking more than what they probably already fucking do because of your bullshit. Why would you do that? And I would have annoyed them. But no, not, not the new Eric. I can't do that. Those days are over with. Kind of sucks, but those days are over with. It wouldn't make a difference any fucking way. They would just call the police and say, look, we got black skin out of my fucking house filming me because I, because you what? Go ahead. Continue it on. Because you what? Because you fired a bunch of people because their skin color is fucking white. You're just as bad as the fucking people who did the fucking shit of, of the slavery days. This is your response? You might as well just come out and say, eye for an eye. Now it's payback. I mean, you might as well just come out and say, it's wrong. Bring the fucking white guy in, the white supremacist. I want to hear what he's saying. I'm not judgmental. It, I have a microphone. Let him get it out. And while he's here at the end, I want to inform him from one supposedly Mexican that you people labeled me as. We don't honor that. We don't respect that. We're going to do everything we can to get your aunt back in. And then maybe he wouldn't be a crazy white fucking supremacist, as you call him. Maybe he wouldn't be so fucking hateful. Yeah, he's wrong for being a white supremacist. You're fucking... They were wrong for doing that shit, too. You're both wrong. Try to teach. Not you people, though. See, there's a difference. You just want that $250 an hour. <laughs> That's what you want. 